that tank looked even better than I expected, especially with the little pot of gold in the side area. It just really brought the whole scape together and really put the theme to this tank. Now onto the creation of my Cloverfield tank. Originally, the tank was supposed to be done in this one gallon little molten glass fishbowl. Unfortunately, after scaping and taking footage of all that, the tank broke. Yep, after three days of sitting on a shelf, just cycling, it broke randomly. At least I was in the fish room when it happened, but when I started hearing glass cr like cracking, I was freaking out. And then I noticed, oh, it's only the bowl that is super expensive, but you know, not that much water ended up on the floor, thankfully. Although these molten glass tanks are advertised to hold water and be little fish tanks, I uh, kind of disagree after this experience. I believe it did crack because of the weight of the water and the substrate combined was just too much, um, especially because the glass is not flat. It's like a weird shape at the bottom. The seller did offer to replace the bowl. Um, but I prefer to just kind of be done with it um, after that happened. The hunt was on to find a new bowl, and lucky for me, I found exactly what I wanted on Amazon. It was advertised as a three gallon pond style bowl. What really attracted me to this bowl in particular was the extra thick glass. I knew that if I accidentally tapped the side, it wasn't gonna shatter and explode everywhere, so that's what attracted me to this bowl. Even though the first bowl didn't work out as planned, it did have an odd shape because it wasn't flat at the bottom. So I decided that I actually really liked that idea of just being really low in the front and then higher in the middle and then low again in the back. So for this bowl, I made a crescent moon shape of elevated aqua soil and substrate in the middle of the tank to try to make a hill effect. I used a variety of different types of aqua soil and substrates for this tank because I wanted it to not be uniform, more of just like a pebbly and dirt look. If you've ever worked with aqua soil before, you may have noticed that little air bubbles start to rise when you fill up the tank with water. Now this is because the soil itself is very porous and actually has little pockets of air inside it. As you fill the whole tank up with water, Water goes in these pockets and replaces the air, pushing it all out. Now this usually just will release on its own, but to kind of speed up the process, I'm going around and releasing some of the larger air pockets. If you've seen a few of my other aquascapes, then you know that I do things a little unconventional. This tank will be no different. We are using some very on-theme green aquarium gravel. It doesn't look like much dry, but once in the tank it has a really nice shimmering effect. I also picked colored aquarium gravel to kind of prove a point that you can actually put some colored aquarium gravel in your tanks and still have it look really, really good. The next color I'm adding is just some plain old light gray gravel. I felt like this was needed as a more intermediary color because as the substrate was, it was just brown, black, and green. It needed a little bit of those more in-between colors. Now it wasn't sold for aquariums, it was actually sold for fairy garden substrate mixes, but um, it worked out. The thing to note is that I did realize after filling up the tank that this gravel is magnetic, but my shrimp are breeding, my fish are breeding, snails are breeding. It seems to not have any ill effect on the livestock. The last color I added was just a little bit of white by using pool filter sand. I don't know, there's something about this that just looks so magical as it falls on the substrate, but unfortunately it didn't last very long at all. What I later discovered is that 
aqua soil is actually really, really light. And even the shrimp were able to pick up the little balls of aqua soil. And this basically led to all of the pool filter sand that was laying on top, eventually falling all down below the aqua soil. So you don't see that anymore. Now onto the base. There's no denying that the original base was just spectacular. There's nothing else like it out there, but I can make something as similar as I can. For this tank, we're going to be using a large pine circular board. I found this one in Home Depot. And to keep some of that really nice pattern of grainage on the wood, I'm just using some good old fashioned mineral oil to give a little bit of protection in case some water gets on it. All the plants in this tank are very easy to propagate and technically just propagate themselves because all these are types of ground covers. Ground covers tend to send out runners and that's how they basically spread across and take over. The placement of these plants is specifically from small leaves to larger leaves until we get to the very back where we hit a pearl weed wall. Now, I could have just stuck with Marsilia and Hydrocotyle species and called it a day, but I really wanted that natural field of clovers look, hence the name of the scape Clover Field. To get this type of look, I was envisioning a bunch of clovers and grasses and other small plants all mixed in together. In this example, I am taking little pieces of Marsilia quadrifolia, the main focal point plant of this tank, and I am just cutting it into little segments. At the node where the two leaves are coming out, there will always be roots that can form. So I'm just chopping these up into smaller pieces so it's easier to plant and easier for it to start spreading out. Now onto the livestock. This is my favorite part of creating a tank is picking out what little animals are going to enjoy your tank just as much as you enjoyed making that little world for them. Off the bat, this was a no brainer. I knew I wanted some species of shrimp and then some type of guppy. Lucky for me, at a local fish swap, I did find some tangerine tigers and they looked like the perfect color that I was going for for this tank. They had that really nice, rich, orangey glow to them, which reminded me of gold. Although this tank went through a few generations of guppies as I was moving babies around in the fish room, we ended up with a little bit of an experiment going on. Unfortunately, when I moved here to Atlanta, I lost almost all of my gold lace snakeskin guppies, all but one male. And we are breeding him with a Japan blue female in the hopes that they will create some variation of snakeskin sword guppy. We have still multiple fry in here that will be growing up and hopefully we can get some more of that snakeskin pattern on a gold bodied guppy. Experiment aside, I do have a lot of other creatures in here. Those were just like to me the most interesting because I'm a guppy person. We also have a variety of different pest snails mostly a lot of ram's horns. I tried to pick just the best goldest ones for this tank. One addition that I didn't expect was some baby rabbit snails. These were an amazing find at a local fish swap and I couldn't be happier. Now of course I saw them the first few days and then never again because they like to burrow in the substrate. So right now they're pretty small. They're not going to do too much damage but and they're a little bit larger, I will move them to a larger tank. For now, they will be living out the beginnings of their life in this tank. For a brief period of time, I didn't have any guppies in this tank, which led me to add these chubby little fairies. <laughs> no, they're not real fairies. These are Magna Daphnia. 
but to me they are so cute and they do kind of maneuver themselves around like little buzzing bees. It was a pleasant surprise to find out that the Daphnia were actually breeding in this tank. I completely didn't expect that. I thought it was gonna be a I might need to add a few extras every now and then, but no, they actually were making little babies. Even though there wasn't enough Daphne in the tank to be scooping a few out and feeding to my other fish, there was definitely enough that I'd always see them and they added this really cute mystical little fairy vibe to the tank. I don't know, every time I looked at them I thought they were just little chubby fairies. The last little critters we're adding to this tank are ostracods and copepods. These function as a micro cleanup crew, eating little bits of algae, bacteria, and fungus that naturally occur in our tanks. They aren't necessary for the tank because shrimp basically eat the same things these guys eat, but because these guys are so much smaller, they can really get into your gravel and substrate and feed on whatever food is down there. Okay guys, I got a little excited, got ahead of myself. Um, I ordered this little, um, I don't know what you call it, urn vase thingy. Um, it's four aquariums and what I did, here let me turn this off. What I did was um, I also on Amazon bought this um, bit of, I don't know, pebble thingies. They come in yellow, um, which is the main reason I got them because I wanted to have like a little pot of gold. I thought that'd be super cute. And eh, let me get out the light so you can see. So I have a few of these lights already. Um, these are just submersible little LEDs. Um, and yeah, I bought one pack. I can't remember the price, but um, I'll put it down below somewhere. Also Amazon. So you get like a few of these and I'm just gonna use one for this project. So, you know, yeah, made some room in there put the light in, you know, kind of just cover it up with some of the little yellow beads or pebbles, I guess you'd say, and doing this one-handed. And then for the light, it has a little remote, you can turn it on, and wow. Wow, look at that, oh my God. It looks so good, guys, oh my goodness. This is a low-tech tank. There is no CO2 and very minimal nutrients are going into the tank, which I have found to be a slight bit of a problem, especially with the Brazilian pennywort. That has been pretty unhappy after adding so many plants. So I will be tweaking my fertilization regimen over time, especially now that I think it's a nitrate issue. Other than one Seachem root tab in the very center of the tank, my fertilizers that I've been dosing is one drop of Seachem Potassium, one drop of Seachem Comprehensive Supplement, and that is done once a month after one of my water changes. Water changes are once every week, 30%, and I do add Salty Shrimp GH, KH Plus, to my tap water to help um, add a little bit more minerals to it. Otherwise, my water wouldn't be suitable for tangerine tigers. Lighting is a very cheap Amazon light. There's no real reason I got it other than I just wanted to try it out. This is a very shallow bowl and lighting a very small tank is way easier than lighting a very big deep tank. So take this as you will. It's good for shallow tanks at least. As always, links to the products I used off of Amazon in the description below. You've probably noticed the emergent growth by now. Yeah, I don't know if this is actually gonna work or not. It was kind of something I winged because I wanted more clovers to be on the outside and top of the tank too, but it's not ready for this video yet. I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. And as always, see you in the next one.